Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Miriam and today I want to recommend some spring reads for you guys. Spring can look quite different depending on where you live. Where I am, it's still quite cold and it snows a lot in March. So we're slowly transitioning into the flowery and beautiful season that spring is. I find that spring and fall are the two seasons where I really, really gravitate towards the coziest books that I can find, whether that's cozy classics or mysteries or fantasy, fairy tales. I just love focusing on the reads that bring me comfort. So I have a list here of about 14 books that I personally think are great reads for the spring season. And I hope that there is a book that suits your reading taste within this list. I have some historical fiction, I have some classics, some fantasy, and yeah, I'm just excited to talk about these books. And I hope that at least one of the books suits your reading tastes and draws your interest. So without further ado, here are the books that I would recommend to you to read during the spring season. I could not recommend books to read in the spring without mentioning at least a couple Jane Austen books. So I've heard from a lot of people that Emma is a great book to read in the springtime. I personally have not read Emma. That is the last full length novel that I have to read by Jane Austen but I would recommend both Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility to read during the springtime. Pride and Prejudice is just a delight. It's fun, it's funny, it's cozy. It's the kind of book that I want to read just in a garden, in a meadow. I think the characters are so well drawn out. And if you haven't read this book, we basically have the Bennett family and they have five daughters and we have Elizabeth, who is the main character of the story. And it's basically about her meeting Mr. Darcy, who is much more wealthy than she is. And they're very much enemies to lovers in this book. The title says it all. They each battle with their own prejudices or pride. I absolutely love Elizabeth's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Bennet. I find them absolutely hilarious. And just the atmosphere of this book, it's such a cozy, cozy book. And I just love all things Regency era. And I think the Regency era is a period in time that I really like to read about during the springtime. So that is Pride and Prejudice. And then in Sense and Sensibility, we have Eleanor and Marianne Dashwood, who they had to move after their father passed away. And even though I found this book to be not as funny as Pride and Prejudice, I still think it's extremely cozy. And I always think of spring whenever I think about this book or when I watch the 90s adaptation, it just screams spring to me. Romance is obviously a very big part of this story and I think it's done very well in this book. And I definitely think that the atmosphere in this book really renders itself well for a spring read. So yes, I would recommend both Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen to read during the springtime. So I mentioned the fact that I think Regency romances are perfect to read in the spring. So this next book is one of my favorites that I've read so far, even though I haven't read very many, but I recommend Frederica by Georgette Hare. So in this book, we have a woman named Frederica who moves to London with her siblings in the hopes of securing a marriage for her younger sister. The family has a distant cousin named the Marquis of Alverstoke. I think it's pronounced Marquis, Marquis, I have no idea. But basically they ask him for his help. And as Alverstoke gets to know the family a little bit better, he finds himself involved in different scrapes and just funny incidences. And I found this book to be incredibly hilarious. Frederica's siblings in particular, her brothers are absolutely hilarious. They just keep getting involved in different problems and their country manners seem to clash with London society. And at the beginning, Alverstoke really doesn't like how obnoxious her siblings can be, but eventually he really softens towards the family, especially towards Frederica. And so it's their story. It's really sweet. Frederica is a very headstrong woman and I love her love for her siblings and how she puts their needs before her own. And Alver Stoke really starts to see just how selfless she is. And it's a beautiful story. It's very sweet and cozy and perfect for the season. Next up, I have not one, but two books to recommend to you by Ella Montgomery. The first one, I don't even have to explain why I think it's perfect to read in the spring. I think it makes sense to everyone. And that is Anne of Green Gables. This is a wonderful story full of just whimsy and beautiful nature writing. And honestly, I think Ella Montgomery writes nature like no one else does. We have young Anne who is an orphan and she ends up moving in with Marilla and Matthew Cuthbert who are siblings. They're old enough to be Anne's grandparents and she's basically taken in. It's really a coming of age story and this entire series is a coming of age story for Anne. And I think she's an extremely compelling character and Anne's love of nature just 
it's contagious and it's beautiful and I highly recommend this book, this entire series. This is definitely one of my favorite children's literature series ever. The second Ellen Montgomery book I'd like to recommend is The Blue Castle and this book is an adult romance that takes place in Ontario, Canada. We have our protagonist named Valency who is almost 30 years old and she is still single. She's considered a spinster at this point. Her family is very domineering and she just doesn't fight for her own desires. She doesn't really have the courage to be her own person and to just live her dreams and so the only way she really gets out of this atmosphere is through these nonfiction books by a man named John Foster. And she also dreams of living in her own blue castle. And that's basically what gets her by. One day she finds out that she has a very serious illness and in an effort to enjoy whatever time she has left, she decides to just live life. She ends up making some choices that truly bring her so much happiness and fulfillment. And I'm not going to say what those are because I feel like it might be a bit of a spoiler. I think it's good to not know too much going into this book. But again, it's the atmosphere, it's the writing, the nature writing. The characters are so well drawn out. And this book is just perfection. Like I've read it twice and I plan on rereading it as many times as I can because it just it brings me so much joy like it's one of those books that I feel so deeply when I read it and I truly truly love the main character I love the courage that she finds to just live a happy life and it's a beautiful beautiful story it's cozy the nature writing is beautiful so if you need a good classic to read this spring I highly recommend The Blue Castle. This next book is a quintessential children's classic that I've seen on many spring recommendations and I understand why after having read it and I think that if you love gardens you need to read The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. So in this book we have a young girl named Mary who was living in India but her parents passed away so she ends up moving back to England and she moves to Yorkshire which is my dream place to live. Like if I could pick anywhere in the world to live, it would either be Yorkshire or Cornwall. I don't know what it is about those regions, but any book set in Yorkshire, I want to read it. <laughs> so anyways, so we have Mary who is now living in Yorkshire with her uncle in this manor house and she's quite a nasty kid at the beginning. She's not very nice and she's told by one of the staff about a secret garden and so she tries to discover this garden. Mary's own health wasn't the greatest at the beginning and so as she's discovering this garden and immersing herself in nature she starts to feel better, she becomes a nicer person, and she befriends some people who work on the estate as well. There's a little bit of mystery in this book as Mary hears cries in the night and she is trying to figure out where those cries are coming from. And yeah this secret garden does play a big role in Mary's development and I think it's a very sweet book. It's not an absolute favorite of mine but I do think it's very whimsical and very very sweet and Although Mary is quite an obnoxious child, her development is very well done in this book and it is a very cozy book. There are some great side characters and I would definitely recommend this for the spring season. This next collection of stories that I want to recommend is actually for very, very young children, but I think adults should read this collection as well. And that is The Complete Tales of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Talking animals, absolutely gorgeous drawings, a beautiful springtime aesthetic. That's what these stories are and it's absolutely perfect. I really don't have much to say about these stories other than they are absolute perfection and I think the artwork itself just screams spring. Just it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. Beatrix Potter has created such an amazing world of animal friends and Oh my gosh, it's just, it's so beautiful and whimsical and I can't get enough of the stories. I can't get enough of the art. I absolutely love rabbits, if you can't tell. One of my favorite mugs and I just, oh my goodness. If you're not gonna read the stories, at least look up the artwork because it is amazing. It is just beautiful. So yeah, those are the complete tales of Peter Rabbit. So next I have some historical fiction and the first one is A Curious Beginning by Deanna Rayborn. And in this book we have a woman named Veronica who finds herself running from her old home where she lived with two old aunts and her life is in danger. We don't know why at the start of the book. She ends up having to live with a very gruff man who has like the appearance almost of a pirate. He's very very gruff and 
they don't really get along at the beginning but she really grows to depend on him to help her solve the mystery of what is going on, why her life is in danger. I think this book is absolute perfection for this season, mainly because it's a mystery. I think mysteries are great to read during the spring, but this book is also perfect for spring as Veronica is a lepidopterist. So she's very, very intelligent when it comes to butterflies. She knows so much about different butterfly species and butterflies are quite important to her. So yeah, Veronica does have a love of nature and of wildlife. And honestly, this entire series is perfect to read during the springtime, so. That is a curious beginning. Next up, we have A Dangerous Alliance, and I don't know how to pronounce the author's first name. It's a Janique. Anyways, this book is a Regency era mystery, very reminiscent of Jane Austen. As you can see, it's an ostentatious romance, and it is just that. It's a very Austen-esque romance. We have multiple men vying after the affections of our main character, Victoria. And we also have some mysteries. So some shady things start happening and Victoria's sister is married to a very abusive man. And so Victoria is trying to help her while she's being bombarded by these different men <laughs> trying to marry her. And her life is quite stressful at this time. So while Victoria is trying to help out her sister who is being abused, she also believes that the only way to save her family from destitution is by marrying. And so with all these men vying for her attentions, Vicky is trying to figure out who to choose and who would be the best match for her. It's very silly and very, very fun. And I think this cover is just a perfect representation of the vibes of this book. It's very, very sweet and at times cliche, but I really enjoyed my time reading this book. Again, just the fact that it's very Austin-esque makes me feel like it's perfect for the springtime. And if you love Regency era romances, I would highly recommend this book. So the last historical fiction book that I'd like to recommend is also a magical realism book, which is not something I'm generally drawn to, but I absolutely loved the magical realism aspect of this book. It made it both cozy yet creepy. And I normally wouldn't recommend a very creepy book for the springtime, but there's just something about this book. I feel like it's perfect for rainy days in the springtime when it's more gloomy outside or that transition from winter to spring and so we have things in jars by jess kidd there's just so much in this book in terms of atmosphere it's gothic it's creepy but it's whimsical and funny the writing is beautiful jess kidd is an auto buy author for me now so in this book we are in the 1860s and we have a female detective named bridie and she is asked to uncover this mystery about a child who was actually stolen. So she's trying to figure out what's going on. London society is fascinated by this mystery, but there is so much more to this child than meets the eye. It does get quite creepy at times, but I loved this book. I think I gave it four stars when I read it. It's so, so captivating and I just, I couldn't put it down. Definitely the complete opposite vibes of Jane Austen, not as flowery, but I definitely think the storytelling, the writing style is so immersive and captivating. As gothic and creepy as it gets, I don't really feel it's autumnal, so I definitely think this is better to read during the springtime, but that's just my personal opinion. But yeah, that is Things in Jars by Jess Kidd. So these next five books are all fantasy, and the first one is Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Marillier, and in this book we have a woman named Sorka who her father ends up marrying this sorceress and this, this chain of events occurs and as a result her brothers are all turned into swans and Sorka is the only person who can break the curse and save her brothers and so Sorka goes on this quest to save her brothers and the entire time she is not allowed to utter a single word, she's not allowed to speak. This book takes place in medieval Ireland and Sorka finds herself kidnapped by Britons. And so she's living in Britain now and she ends up falling in love with one of the men named Red and their love story is absolutely beautiful. There's a lot of nature in this book. It's a very slow moving plot line and I just think it's absolutely perfect for early spring. We have swans, we have a beautiful love story and yeah, I just think Juliet Marillier is perfect to read in any season, but particularly in the spring. This next book is one that I read in February and I talked about it quite a bit in my February wrap up. So I'm not gonna talk too much about it in this video, but that is Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. This is actually the author's debut and it is absolutely beautiful. I think everyone should read this book if they're a fan of whimsical fantasy that very much feels like a Disney movie. This book is basically about a girl named Sing Yin who has to save her mom from exile. And so she goes on this journey. She 
hides her identity and she really learns a lot about her own magical abilities along the way. She falls in love and it's a very, very beautiful story. The writing in here is beautiful. The descriptions of the different places that the main character goes to is just exquisite. The setting is beautifully crafted. The author did an amazing job. Just like this cover to me screams springtime and Oh my goodness, I love this book. I definitely recommend this book to read during the spring season. This next fantasy book is one I'm recommending solely because it is one of the most whimsical books I've ever read in my life. The magic is absolutely gorgeous. The writing is super flowery. And that is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. So in this book, we have Laszlo Strange, who is a librarian who has been obsessed with this lost city called Weep. And he eventually finds himself traveling to Weep where he meets this goddess who has blue skin and she is just absolutely beautiful. Her name is Sarai and they fall in love and this book is breathtaking. It is absolutely gorgeous. I highly, highly recommend reading this book in the springtime. I'm not going to go in depth with the plot just because I think it's good to go in not knowing too much about this book, but amazing, amazing, beautiful writing. Highly, highly recommend. Next up, we have one of my favorite fairy tales of all time, and that is The Goose Girl by Shannon Hale. So in this book, we have a girl named Annie, and she is the crown princess of Killindry, and she actually has the ability to speak to animals, but the people in her land don't trust this ability, and so she's sent off to be married to a prince in a foreign land. Some crazy things happen on the journey, and her maid actually takes her identity, and she ends up going as the princess of Killindry to meet this prince and Annie finds herself a goose girl so she is working with geese and taking care of them and getting to know all the different people who work in the stables and work for the royal family basically. One of my favorite characters in this book is actually a talking horse named Falada and I adore him. It's a very very sweet story and just this cover also screams springtime. I think this book first came out almost 20 years ago so it's been around for quite a while but if you have not yet read this book or the entire series The Books of Bayern I definitely recommend it and I think spring is the perfect season to read them so that is The Goose Girl by Shannon Hale. Okay so the last book I'm going to be recommending to you is one that I read for the first time I think last year and it is by far one of my absolute favorite middle grade fairy tale stories I have ever read. Super underrated and that is The Pr Two Princesses of Bamar by Gail Carson Levine. So this author wrote Ella Enchanted which I actually have not read yet so I definitely have to read that soon but I don't know if Ella Enchanted can beat this book for me. I absolutely loved this book and the back actually summarizes the story so well that Rather than me try to describe what the book is about, I'm just going to read what's on the back. So it says, Brave and adventurous, Princess Meryl dreams of fighting dragons and protecting the kingdom of Bamar. Shy and fearful, Princess Addie is content to stay within the safety of the castle walls. The only thing that the sisters share is their unwavering love for each other. The tables are turned, however, when the Grey Death leaves Meryl fatally ill. To save her sister, meek Princess Addie must find the courage to set out on a dangerous quest filled with dragons, unknown magic, and death itself. Time is running out and the sisters' lives and the future of the kingdom of Bamar hang in the balance. It's so, so good. It is a beautiful story of sisterly love and adventure. This is another one of those books that I don't think I could ever get sick of on rereads and I definitely want to reread it this year. But yeah, that is The Two Princesses of Bamar and I highly, highly recommend this book in the springtime. It's whimsical, it's magical, and it's exactly the kind of children's fairy tale that I love. So I highly suggest picking this book up. I don't think you would regret it. So those are the books that I would recommend to you all to read during the spring season. If you've absolutely adored any of these books, please, please, please let me know because I just wanna gush about them with people who have also adored them. If there's a book that I talked about that you actually didn't like, I'd also love to know and why, why you didn't like it. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you for watching this video. I hope you guys are all having an amazing day wherever you are in the world. I hope that you're doing okay. And again, thank you so much for watching. Bye.